Hi everyone, it is Sarah and recently I put out a three day itinerary guide to New York City and it turned out that you really loved it. So today I'm making a seven day guide. I'll be highlighting my favorite things to do, eat, see and experience in the city and walking you through each day by morning, midday, afternoon and evening. Now if you want a copy of this seven day guide to take with you and print out, I can give you access to that in my bubble up folder where you'll find printable NYC itineraries, checklists, walking tours, packing lists, and many other helpful NYC resources that I create or use daily. And all of this is for free. Bubble Up is the perfect marriage between Google Drive and Pinterest, ensuring that you'll get the best experience possible in New York City. So to get that printable seven day itinerary, click on the link below, type in your email, and I will add you to my personal Bubble Up folder where you can download the itinerary and the rest of the resources. Now, if you saw my other NYC videos or my three day guide to NYC, then you'll know that New York is an expensive city. On average, it costs about $300 to $500 per person per day to vacation here. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, that is so expensive. Well. The thing is, I've allocated that cost because I'm including lodging, food, restaurants, bars, and attractions all in that cost. So all of the things included in this video will be in within that price range. However, how much you pay is really up to you and your style of traveling. For lodging, I recommend that you use Airbnb. Now, you can get a good Airbnb in New York for about $120 a night. So I factored that into the $300 to $500 already. And if you haven't used Airbnb, you can use my link below and you'll save $40 off your first booking. However, if you'd rather stay in a hotel, I completely understand that. Just be prepared that most hotels are an average of $350 per night, so you should add that in to your budget. Now, since you're in the city for a week, I recommend getting a weekly Metro card, which is only $32 and allows you to travel throughout the entire city all included in those $32. It's an amazing deal. However, you may know, or maybe I have to be the bearer of bad news to tell you this, but our subway isn't the most reliable or cleanest experience in the world. So if you are looking for something more reliable and a little bit more enjoyable, then I recommend you take a Lyft. Lyft is the largest growing rideshare company in the US, and they make it easy to call a car wherever you are located. I prefer to use a Lyft over other rideshare companies because they're reliable and socially responsible. You can use my code FUNK66734 to save $5 on your first Lyft ride. All right, now that you have the lodging, the transportation, the cost, let's get into our itinerary. Now, if you haven't seen my three-day guide, I do recommend you watch that first because we're about to start on day four. I will see you there. One of the most popular things to do is to walk along the High Line. This is an old railway that was converted into an above ground walkway with gardens, sculptures, and local art. Now, if you go here, I do recommend going before 9 a.m. because it does get very crowded. It starts at Hudson Yards, right here where the vessel is. This vessel is an intricately designed staircase sculpture. It has 154 flights of stairs, almost 2,500 individual steps, and 80 landings. To climb it, you do need a ticket. However, I personally don't think that you should climb it. I did it and I just felt like it was a giant workout and then the views weren't that great. But once again, this is my opinion. And I really think just take a picture here. It's really photogenic, really pretty. And then head to the corner where you can start the Highline experience. Once you uh, check out the vessel, to get to the High Line, literally walk to the back of the vessel near where the shops are, and it's right in this corner next to the shed. So just walk this way, and that is the entrance to the High Line. So let's go check it out right now. The High Line stretches almost 20 blocks from Hudson Yards on 30th Street all the way to the meatpacking industry. Now, the northern section recalls the days when the High Line was unkept and abandoned by all, while the southern section has more modern art and vendors. Once you've walked all the way down the High Line, you'll be right near Chelsea Market, which is one of my obsessions. When you come here, you absolutely need to go to my favorite restaurant, which is right here. 
It is Los Tacos Numero Uno, and these guys serve the most authentic tacos you'll find in the city. When you come here, I definitely recommend getting the carne asada or pollo asado tacos. They are banging. But here's the thing, if you don't like tacos, there are so many other options here at the Chelsea Market. That's what's great about it. You can find any type of food you could even imagine here. The thing about Los Tacos Numero Uno is they always have a long line. Right now we're here early, so the line's not too long. Don't be overwhelmed by that. They do have another location in Times Square now too. So get this, and then we're gonna go shopping in the artisanal market. I'll see you there. We're on our way to Artisan, please. To get there, you have to go all the way to the back of the Chelsea Market near 10th Ave. So just follow me, we're gonna get there right now. It's kind of tricky to find, that's why I'm telling you, but it's so worth it. All right, we're here. This place sells all locally made artwork, stationery, jewelry, fashion. There's some incredible photography here too, but my favorite place is Verrier Handcrafted. Come and look at this, it is gorgeous. This is my favorite store here, very handcrafted. <laughs> I buy all my cards here. What I love about these cards are they're all inspired by New York and they have glitter and just beautiful designs. Look at how pretty these are. So all of these are handcrafted, so all of the neon paint is hand painted and all of the glitter is put on by hand. They have beautiful cards like this, all inspired by New York. They also have artwork that is super fashionable and cute. Next head here to the Whitney Museum, which is known for its contemporary American art. It's actually the only museum in the city that only features American art and has featured artists such as Andy Warhol and was started by Gertrude Vanderbilt. She became known as a patron of the arts and had an extensive collection of American art that she offered the Met Museum in 1929. When they turned her down because of their European art focus, she created her own museum known today as the Whitney in 1931. Talk about girl power. A little insider tip here is to head to their eighth floor where they have a lovely cafe right over here and it overlooks the beautiful NYC skyline. So grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the view in between viewing some of the most beautiful art in the city. In the evening, head here to Gallo Green, which is on top of the McKittrick Hotel, which is not a hotel. I know that's confusing. It's not actually a hotel. It's a immersive theatrical experience that is famous for a amazing show called Sleep No More. I do recommend you go to that show, and I'm gonna go to that show tonight, but before that, head here to Gallo Green. It's the rooftop restaurant and bar in the summer. It looks like this. It's a beautiful garden with a train car, and then in the winter, it's actually a Scottish Lot. So no matter what time of year you come here, it has a cool vibe, but they do not disappoint with the food. The food is ridiculous. It's so good and they have great cocktails. I haven't had a bad cocktail yet, but you know, next you had to have to sleep no more, which you use this mask. Sleep No More is the story of Macbeth in the 1930s. It takes place inside of this hotel throughout several floors, and it's a completely immersive experience, so you feel like you've been transported to that time and place. It's absolutely amazing, and unlike anything else you can do in the city, and everyone has to wear a mask like this. <laughs> So you're completely anonymous, which is really fun. And also it's great for everyone because they actually don't have any speaking. And I know that sounds crazy, but just trust me when I say, this is one thing that you can't miss in NYC. And make sure to get your tickets in advance because they sell out quickly and have been selling out for years. I recommend you start your morning here at Felix Roasting Co. This upscale photogenic coffee shop is just so much more than your typical coffee shop. I mean, seriously, it looks like a movie set and they serve the most unique coffee drinks in town. I just ordered the Hickory Smoked S'mores Latte and look at this masterpiece. Like, 
I've never seen a drink that looked anything like this. Just the presentation and the way they make it in front of you is absolutely amazing. They are known for their Hickory Smoked S'mores Latte, which is made with an addictive graham cracker infused steamed milk that is mixed with espresso in a chocolate rimmed cup. Next, the barista covers the drink with a glass infusing it with hickory smoked aroma. They also have light bites here. I got their almond croissant to go with this because I'm, I'm hungry and this is a light breakfast. But my tip to you is if you want to get this drink, make sure you arrive before 10 a.m. because they get sold out quickly and it's something that you don't want to miss. The only downside, I'll be honest with you, this costs $14.50. <laughs> But they do have cheaper options here, so don't worry. If you want to be extra like me, you can get this. If you want to just be, you know, like a more reasonable person, <laughs> you can get one of their other options, which are also gorgeous, by the way. I'm gonna enjoy this now. So let me take a sip. Let me see what it tastes like. Whoa. You can really taste the smoke infused in that milk, and I love this. You can have that, you get like almost like a honeycomb effect. Man. That is crazy. So unique. Cheers, Felix Roasting Co. You're doing it right. Next, head to Soho for a successful shopping spree. New York is one of the best places to go shopping. Here you'll find everything from designer stores to boutique shops, outlet malls, sample sales, and much, much more. Head to Broadway and Prince Street for the most successful shopping spree in Soho. But if you're looking for specific store recommendations, I'll have all of that linked below in my shopping videos. And if you're looking for budget shopping, check out my budget shopping video where I give you tips on the best spots to get the greatest deal how you can avoid the shopping tax in New York, and even a spot where you can get Gucci and Chanel for under $100. Since your breakfast was light, I recommend coming here to Clinton Street Bakery, which is known for its unbelievable brunch and lunches. This spot is locally run by couple Neil and Dee Dee, who started the restaurant over their love of food. It was once a small wholesale baking company with a storefront and a few loyal neighborhood customers. However, these days, most folks know Neil's pancakes are voted the best in the city and his American comfort soup food is the best of the best. My insider tip here is that you must come early or if you're here on a weekend, you're gonna have to have a long wait. But the thing is, come on a weekday, you'll avoid the wait and you'll enjoy all of this deliciousness. Now let's dive in. This one is the blueberry pancakes with warm maple butter. It has Maine blueberries, banana walnut, and chocolate chunk. These are very famous pancakes. They're fluffy. I can already tell that consistency is perfection. Look at that. So ready for it. Like little pillows. <laughs> This is their sugar cured bacon, but we also got the double smoked bacon. <laughs> yes, obviously you can never have too much bacon. I think the sugar bacon wins for me, but I like sweeter things. This is their brioche French toast with caramelized bananas, roasted pecans, and warm maple butter. It almost looks like platanos on the top to me, but I know they're not. I'm gonna dip this one in the maple syrup this time. Really tasty, very filling. I wanted to switch it up and do more of a lunch dish because they do great lunches here as well. This is their fried chicken sandwich and this has lemon pepper mayo, shredded romaine, pickled green tomatoes on a Kaiser roll. Look at that, delicious chicken. That fried chicken is banging. I could eat that chicken by itself though, really well done. Don't miss the pancakes when you come here, but Nothing I had here was bad, so you really can't lose. Now I'm gonna enjoy this and I'll see you at the next spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in. In the afternoon, you can either continue shopping in Soho because seriously, there is just so much to see there that you could spend the whole day there if you wanted to, or 
If you want to switch it up a bit, you could explore the gorgeous street art here in the Lower East Side or the East Village. Plus, after a meal at Clinton Street Baking Co., you might want to walk off some of those delicious pancakes. There's tons of street art in this area, but I'll just put a map in my Bubble Up folder that has all of my favorite spots marked, so you can just follow that. To get access to the Bubble Up folder, that will be linked below. In the evening, head here to the dessert bar, Speakeasy at Patisserie Chanson. This is a six course dessert experience. And you may be thinking, I don't think I could have six desserts. Well, don't worry, they're not all sweet. And that's why I recommend this as your dinner option. All of the dishes are unique and they change seasonally, but they're they're just so outside of the box. Like this is the first course we've got for drink experiences. I'm not really sure what's a course and what's a drink. This one has jalapeno and apple gelato with a prosecco foam and then a apple soda on top of it. And it's incredibly refreshing and a great palate cleanser for your first taste. But it just gets crazier from here, so let's just go, let's keep going. <laughs> this has to be the fanciest ice cream I've ever eaten. Caviar on top and liquid nitrogen and flowers. They're covering all the boxes. Mmm. <laughs> See now, now I'm gonna have to request all of my ice cream made with caviar. <laughs> Look at this. They don't mess around with their napkins here. They put them in a vase. I've never seen that before. Amazing! You can add a cocktail pairing to this. It's $58 more, but it is part of the experience because all of these dishes are so extraordinary. So while you're here, you might as well. I mean, come on. Just look at what they did with a napkin. Imagine what they can do with cocktails. Caviar. We run away. all about Brooklyn. Now it is so hard to cover all of Brooklyn in one day because if Brooklyn was its own city, it would be the fourth largest city in the United States. Yeah, take that in for a moment. But I'm going to try to cover as much as I can the highlights of the city. However, if you would like me to make a whole Brooklyn guide, comment below and I will make it. Let's begin our day in Brooklyn. First, we're starting in Brooklyn Heights, which was designated as the city's first historic district in 1965. Here, you can walk along the beautiful cobblestone streets and the brownstone houses that were once home to New York's elite in the 1800s. This area is still one of the most expensive areas in the city and is super, super iconic and beautiful. While you're here, make sure you walk along the Brooklyn Heights Promenade, which has some of the most stunning views of the Manhattan skyline. And as you're walking along this beautiful street, pay close attention to the street signs, many of which are named after prominent 19th century families. However, there are a few that stand out, like Cranberry, Orange, and Pineapple Street. Legend has it that Miss Mada, which I might be saying her name wrong, but bear with me, tore down the street names of the prominent families that she didn't like and replaced them with names of fruit. Tearing it down. <laughs> we run away. After walking through Brooklyn Heights, head down here to Dumbo. This is my favorite part of Brooklyn because of its gorgeous Manhattan views and the great restaurants and bars here. It's called Dumbo, which stands for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. The Manhattan Bridge is right here, so you know you're in the heart of Dumbo when you're right near that bridge. Now let's go inside to check out one of my top recommendations while you're here in Dumbo. I recommend going to the Time Out Market for lunch. This new market has 21 of New York's best eateries all under one roof. I haven't had something here that I didn't like, so I really think that no matter what you get, you will love. But do not miss dough. This is a cookie dough restaurant, and they have 14 different flavors of cookie dough. This is their uh, brokey batter. It's brownie batter and cookie dough together. It's so delicious. So make sure you get this while you're here. Oh my God. If you need a caffeine boost, 
head here to Brooklyn Roasting Co. This coffee shop is just as like hipster as it gets. It's so cool in that way. They also have a matcha bar and serve some excellent caffeinated beverages. But one of the things I want to talk about with Dumbo is how photogenic it is. If you recognize this photo, this one, or this one, they were all captured here in Dumbo. I have a whole video on the most photogenic spots in the city, and many of them are in Dumbo. That will be linked below, and I also have a photo map that is in my Bubble Up folder you can access to go to all of those spots. Also, you'll find a walking tour that I made of Dumbo for a more personalized experience. In the afternoon, head here to Williamsburg. This is probably the most famous part of Brooklyn and is known for its hipster culture. If you walk along Bedford Avenue, you're gonna find incredible stores. And one of my favorites is this mini mall. Inside, you're gonna find vintage thrift shops, clothing stores, bookstores, and much more. So let's go take a look. So the cool thing about this mini mall is everything here is Brooklyn made. Like here's some beautiful Brooklyn made cars. They're super adorable. Then you come down this way and there's thrift shops with really unique style. You have a bookstore that's second hand and you can get books for a dollar. This is actually where I used to get all my books when I lived here. This is my favorite bubble tea place if you haven't had bubble tea. And this one has tons of adorable like um, gift ideas. Uh, I did a tour here once and my tour guest bought some really cute Brooklyn maps and things like that. There's much, much more in here, obviously, but um, you get the idea. Brooklyn, it's it's just, it's, it's a must-do. So that's a little bit taste of Brooklyn, and now we're actually gonna head out of Brooklyn, so I'll see you at our next spot. In the evening, head here to Greenwich Village, where you will find one of the most amazing comedy experiences in the city. Here is the Comedy Cellar, and it is famous for having some of the most incredible acts for a low price. Every night, they have four to five comics that are normally famous names, by the way, appear here. You never know who might show up, but there's been famous names like Ray Romano, Chris Rock, Colin Quinn, and many, many others. Tickets are normally about $20 and need to be reserved about a month in advance. Make sure that when you're booking, you look for the word show on their reservation page because they also offer reservations for other venues. And they also have food here, so when I go, I normally also order dinner. It is an experience that you can't miss. And after laughing the night away, of course you need to do nightlife here, so I'll see you at our nightlife spot. Obviously you have to do nightlife when you're here in New York. Patrick and I made a whole video about nightlife. You can check that out, it's linked below. We'll bring you through all of the parties that are happening in the city. But I believe you can really hook them up with the whole situation of what's going down by day, am I wrong? Yeah, so if you want to come along to any of the parties, we do maybe 18 to 19 every week. You just uh, message me on Instagram below and I'll be able to give you all the information for all the events. Yeah, so he can hook you up and make sure you have an amazing time while you're visiting NYC. Absolutely. Thank you for always hooking it up. Oh, you, I you got know, you, Sarah. You never let me down. You really don't. Not you really yet. don't. Not you yet. know what? Here you can even do mini golf on the roof. This place is called Magic Hour, and we talked about it in our other video. Yeah, that's but, cool. Let's play. Okay. <laughs> And before I continue, I have a special announcement, which is if you saw my three-day guide to New York, then you'll know that on the last day in the city, I actually recommend you do a helicopter ride because the most amazing experience and everything else will kind of seem subpar to it. So if you are here for seven days, I do recommend you swap out day three with day seven. Got it? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> One of the most iconic buildings in New York is Grand Central, and though the version we see today is actually the third build, it's been here since 1854 and has tons of fascinating secrets, such as a hidden tennis court, a speakeasy that was once a luxurious office of a jazz age financer, and a $20 million opal clock. I highly suggest taking their audio tour that is available seven days a week from their tour's office for only $12. One 
Once you're done exploring Grand Central, head here to the New York Public Library, which is just as grand in its own way. This place is admired for its world-class collections and symbolic architecture. I actually filmed a video here called More Secrets of NYC Revealed because there's actually tons of fascinating secrets here as well. So make sure to check that out, it will be linked below. While you're here, make sure you check out the Rose Main Reading Room. It is gorgeous, and if you're interested in a tour, they offer that for free. Free one-hour tours begin at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Monday through Saturdays and 2 p.m. on Sundays. For more details on where to meet, check their website. After checking out two of New York's most iconic structures, head to the back of the New York Public Library where you will find Bryant Park. I recommend going to the eateries across the street here, grabbing lunch, and then sitting in one of their picnic tables here. It is a beautiful way to have lunch in the city. If you're visiting in the winter, you can enjoy a meal at their winter lodge and then ice skate afterwards. Either way, this park has so much to do and almost everything is free. In the summer, they also offer yoga, ping pong, fencing, juggling, and much more. In the afternoon, head to the top of the rock and Times Square. These are two places that are very touristy, but honestly, if you're here, you have to come see it. The top of the rock, the time to see it is sunset. I mean, look at this. Honestly, it is like, for these sunset tickets, it's about $50, but these views are unlike anywhere you're gonna get in a bar, so you gotta go see it. On this side, you have the Empire State Building, One World Trade, the Chrysler Building. You can also see the New Year's Eve Ball. And then on the other side, you can see Central Park. It's 360 degree views of just epicness. And of course, get that iconic shot with this lovely thing. So I'm about to get that, but I'm gonna enjoy the sunset now. Don't miss it, uh, book in advance. That's it. In the evening, head here to Batsu. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever found in New York. It's a Japanese game show dinner experience where, you know, it's hard to even explain and I feel like I don't want to ruin it for you to like, I want you to be surprised. So let's go get our Batsu on. You know, you got to get the VIP because then you got these cool headbands. How cool do I look? This show is hilarious, so I'm so excited. It's my fourth time. Part of the VIP is that the sake ninja comes around and refills your shot with sake. So cheers. 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 Oh They're going to try to guess a multi syllabic word, a really long word. If you like this video, remember to subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Sarah Funky, and watch my other NYC videos. I have tons of them. And don't forget that if you want a printable PDF version of this seven day itinerary, you can get that by signing up for my bubble up folder below. I'll see you next time.